78 and a quarter centimeters. Yeah. Hmm? 78 and a quarter. 77 and a quarter. Oh, 77. Oh. That's the width. Right, 77 and a quarter. And how deep is it again? 11 inches. 11. Yeah. yeah. Eleven inches, man. I could <coughs> fall into that pan and get lost. Yeah. Jeez. Centimeters. Let me see how much centimeters is. Twenty. Maybe twenty centimeters. Not quite twenty centimeters. Twenty-seven and a quarter centimeters, or half. Twenty-seven and a quarter centimeters. Mm. Yeah. Yes, first in the world. You believe? <laughs> we believe. Yes. That's right. Well, that's, uh, we don't do our research properly. We don't know. Yeah. Uh, a lot of big claims, things. <coughs> That's right, research is the key. We're getting close to the truth. I think people may be the same as still time from years ago. Yeah. They made a claim that they are the first in the world. Oh. <coughs> Who made the stainless steel pan? Some people in Germany. Okay, I thought you were the first. Well, well very big as myself was the first people to, to make stainless steel pans. So who made so 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 which people in Germany made stainless steel pans then? Uh, I can't remember the, the name now, but they were looking for tuners around the world to, to tune the pans for them. Yeah. They patented the, the sinking process, which they call what hydroform. Hydroform. Yeah. That they find a way of softening the stainless steel that they can uh, stretch to that depth, about eight inches. So the pan was made completely out of stainless steel. Yeah. And uh, so what happened then? Did they, they were they were they successful? <coughs> um, I got one from them and I looked at it and I thought, well. There's so much space in the middle, and they only had four notes in the middle, so I remarked it and I put six notes in the middle, going from C to higher. Mm. And I tuned it, you know, and it probably wasn't waiting to get some remarks from me about uh, what I think. Yeah. You know? But in order for them to, to get those sort of remarks from me, you know, they've got to pay for that. They've got to pay for that information. They can't just that, yeah. come with their research and then try a thing. But but wait, didn't they um? So they knew how to make the pan in the first place, though. They knew how to make the, the drum. And they were looking for tuners to tune it for them. Oh. Um, unfortunately, they couldn't get to us actually for them, and I could have told them that mm. stainless steel is the material that doesn't stay in tune. Yeah, that doesn't stay in tune. It doesn't stay in tune. So how does your base stay in tune then? It does not stay in tune. <coughs> it, uh, it's almost there. Yeah. It do does not stay in tune long. Okay. And stainless steel tends to have a lot of sustain, a lot of ring. Yeah. And the base is not like that. Mm. And this, uh, I couldn't control <coughs> the, the sustenance of the note. It was a very difficult material to work with. <laughs> yeah, I could imagine. It's, it's really tough as well, isn't it? Yeah. Really tough. Yeah, yeah trying to sink it with a hammer. 
it's it's five inches and it's not going any further. Really? Yeah. It wouldn't go no further than five inches. Yeah. So I, I put a, a, a load of heat under the uh, boil it until it come like kind of white hot. Yeah. And I say okay. And I fire inside and outside and still it didn't. Um, wow. It didn't make it softer. The stainless steel has to have to be at a certain temperature to get softer. So then, okay, it has to be at a certain temperature, and and um, let's say more force um, on on the actual metal surface wouldn't wouldn't have made a difference, no. no. Even if you know, you know, like them, 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 them compressors or whatever you call them, I not compressor. I mean, tend to go the other way uh, when it's heated up. See, my seal will go sharp. Yeah. And see, the seal goes flat. Yeah. Okay. That's interesting. That's the problem we were having in Trinidad mm. uh, in the World Festival. And when they go to practice in the in the day, the stainless steel basin and was so flat and pitched that you know it sounded out well, it auto tuned to the rest of the band. Yeah. Uh, I had them put in water in all the bases. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so when they come to, to practice in the evening now. No, they did the bass and um, they, they were relatively in tune. Mm -hmm. you, you could have boiled an egg in the stainless steel pan because of the reflection from the sun and the water. Yeah. So why is it that they don't stay in tune for long? I have <coughs> no idea. Uh, this is another part of the research need to be done. Yeah. Because no tuner can tell how far and note will move out of pitch when the temperature changes. Right. Whether it is heated up or, or played in the oven and, and um, Yeah. In it's or it's snowed on yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I thought I thought that it was kind of um standard. I thought it was actually standard that um it only goes out, it only goes um, sharp to a certain level and it just goes sharp, like they all go sharp together to the same level, that's what I thought. Yeah, yeah. So like, let's say a whole barn is tuned, I mean a whole barn is, is outside in the sun and let's just say, for argument's sake, that all the palm faces are black and then they all go sharp, I thought that you, the, the band would have still sounded kind of you know, together? Yeah, the band still sound together, but uh, people who has perfect pitch would realize that uh, those bands are the pitch. Oh, so some would go slightly more sharper than yeah. others? and Depending on how loose or how tight you uh, may be not. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's why I always tend to want to make my notes you know, fairly tight. Uh, the harder you hit, the louder it will be and, and you don't get no distortion. Yes, that's what I've noticed about your notes. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I'm not happy to, to be making a pan and, and then when you're looking for volume or you're getting a distortion and weak notes. Mm. I can't be happy with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because some pans yeah, you you do need the volume. Let's say, for argument's sake, again, like carnival. Mm -hmm. That's where you need the volume at certain times, and that's when you really. That's the only time really the pan should be hit. T should be played louder. I never. I don't like the word hit. You know, I like the word played. You know, you play a note, and if there's any time that you need to really play a note much louder, it's in carnival. You know, even though the, the sound of the instrument carries anyway. So you can end up getting less volume playing harder. You're right, right. And I've heard some notes when you when you play them notes, it's like it's like you're choking. It feels like the note is actually choking, and starting to give way. So you know you just can't do it. But some people don't even realize that and just continue to lash the hell out of the notes, not thinking that the harder you hit it, the better it sounds. So that's something. And the really instrument that haven't got any. <coughs> Any life ex expectancy, you know, just say like right. You know, you're, you're really killing the instrument by playing it too hard. Right, yeah. exactly. 
Your rim looking so nice, I, I, I might as well just leave it there, I don't send it to home. <laughs> yeah. Okay. See this kind that. of soft paper, I, I prefer to use as you don't scratch the steel. Mm. That rim is looking so beautiful, I love the rim. Mm. What, what I'll do now, I'll just put some um, Okay. Oh yeah, all of those um bits came out but since you've been doing that. Okay, thank you.